welcome, welcome, welcome to the weekly one shots, everybody. How you guys doing? Man, it has been a morning. <laughs> it has been a morning. We did some sound check stuff. We did a whole bunch of other things. Still working on the opening sequence. Hope that some of you guys that are here really enjoyed the um, opening music that was given to us by our good, good friend and compatriot. Um, like somebody that's like a family member to me. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Good old Quinn Jen. And um, welcome to Weekly One Shots, everybody. So, I am Solar Gray, the Cinematic Sorcerer. Yeah, I'm trying to add a little err because it's a new year. It's a new show. And let me give you guys a little bit of um, rundown on what this show is. Every week, I write a one-shot campaign. And, of course, um, why would I do that? Why would I go through all the trouble of writing a one-shot campaign? I will tell you why. Because here at Back in the Deck, we know that nerd culture, gaming, and all that jazz is for everybody. Okay? Everybody. It doesn't matter your skill level, because we all started as noobs, and there's a lot of people out there that want to learn. But let's face it, there are gatekeepers. But here at BidP, we kick down those walls. So, um, every Saturday or so, we get together, and we, ooh, let me just move this here, uh, we get together every Saturday, and I run a one-shot campaign, and the idea is for different players <coughs> every week, and even if we have repeat players, everyone plays a new character, so you really get to mix and match and pick and pick and pick all, all the way around to make sure you get to play what you want to play, <coughs> how you want to play it, and all that jazz, because, um, well, how can, how can I put this? If you're new, these games can be so overwhelming, okay? You have characters, classes, what game are you playing, what system, are you playing good or evil? You're essentially playing a character in literature, isn't that right, Mr. Khan? Well, yeah, exactly. That's I was the, about to the say, whole... man. Okay, you're scaring me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was muted to, uh, you know, give people the cinematic sorcerer's silky smooth voice. Ah, okay. And, um, if you're wondering about the sound, I wasn't muted, which was actually fun. So, um, what we've got going here right now is, um, <clears throat> in a nutshell, we are here to run games for players on every level and every week is a new adventure all right so um so far this is i think our third or fourth show and we've had some repeat customers i guess you can say which is very neat so what are we doing here well we know like i gotta do a quick announcement here before i do all that other stuff we know that gamers in general um we're studious. A lot of us are studious. And studious people come in two types, just like everyone. Introvert and extrovert. Okay? And if you're like me and you're an extrovert, it's no big deal. Show me on camera. Give me a chance to show the world my voice. But that might not be you. We totally get that. So you know what? <clears throat> if you want to be on weekly one-shots, that's perfectly fine. That is perfectly fine. That is perfectly great. I actually want more people. Um, I want more people to be on weekly one shots because, like I said, the more people get out there, the bigger the community grows, and we end up really calling something awesome. So, if you're interested, well, on the Facebook we have our weekly one-shot chat group, and that is where I post all the stuff on, like, hey, what, who's in, blah, blah, blah. Right now, we're only 15 people deep. Honestly, I want thousands, thousands of people. So many people coming in saying, I want to play, I want to play, I want to play. And if we do this right, we might be able to get weekly one-shots all over the country um, streaming through the Twitch channel. So that could be a really fun thing. But I want more people. So... If you're interested in playing, hit us up on that. Join Deckers on the Book, which is the Facebook group, of course, because that is just how we roll. Um, ooh, sorry, that's a completely different, um, that's a completely different, um, 
what is the what is the term? That's a completely different catchphrase for a completely different channel. But um, join Deckers on the book, which is the open Facebook group um, for Deckers. Hey, isn't that fun? Um, and believe me, the word will get back to us that you want to be on weekly one shots. Here we are on Deckers on the book. Isn't this fun? Ha ha. Hey hey. You know, hey, look, no, 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 Winter Park is a group location. Nah, we're global. And, um, yeah, on here we're showing what all the videos come up, what people are kickstarting, you know, where people are doing stuff. And if you want to play and you don't want to show your face, I understand. I totally get that. Um, I am personally not like that, but that doesn't mean that you're bad. It just means you don't want to show your face, and I totally understand and respect that. So you know what we do when you don't want to show your face? We give you a way to not show your face. And I'd like to say hello and welcome to our boy, our man, our man on the street, the Ruthless Wonder. How you doing, bro? Man, I'm doing good. Um, bad, bad day to day face wise, but um, doing doing real good. Oh man. So yeah, yeah, that is a thing. And when he says bad, bad time face wise and all that stuff, sometimes he can't show his face. So we got a little avatar for him. Um, he's calling See? in from good old Missouri, good old Kansas City, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Kansas City, Missouri. Right on all accounts. Huh? I said right on all accounts. Okay, I'm I'm happy to hear that actually. Um. Yeah, just trying to get your avatar looking a little bit cooler. A little bit cooler, a little bit nicer here. Trying to get this bar to leave. Urgh. But, either way. So, yeah, we got that, Jazz. There he is. Look at that face. Look at that put him there. Yeah, look at that. Um, so, what we've got going is we're doing a one-on-one -on -one session because, again, it's still the beginning of the year. People are recovering from holiday seasons. But, yeah, I really want to put that out there. If you want to play... And um, and you don't want to show your face, just send us an avatar. And where do you send an avatar to, you might be asking, because a lot of people ask those kinds of questions. That's cool. What I have to say is, send us an avatar ooh, to backinthedeck.com or backinthedeck at gmail.com. You can also hit us up on YouTube um, at the Big P. Now, if you really want, just want to send an avatar and say, I want to play, I want to play, then follow us on Twitter as well. That is at Back in the Deck, B-A-C-K. Oh, wait. Yeah, I should put it. No, that's fine. Uh, B-A-C-K-I-N-T-H-E-D-E-C-K. And, of course, um, join Deckers on the book, like I said, and find out all that other stuff because it's fun. It's wacky. It's some really cool stuff. And... If you guys are a lot like me and you spend a whole lot of time, and I mean a whole lot of time, on the road and in traffic, then you shouldn't be watching us. That, that's not what you should be doing. You should be listening to the archive over on the SoundCloud. And of course, follow us on Instagram and you can send your avatars in all of those places. Because that is what I like doing. Now, I got some other announcements that I want to show up for you guys. Um, I asked a few people to come on in, at least for the first 10 minutes of the show, um, so I can get all the advertisements and all that stuff out. I want to give a shout out to NP City. What's going on, guys? Hashtag Deck Mob. Woo! Yeah, look at those guys. And right now, we got some dudes, and people are subscribing with Twitch Prime. If you guys don't know what that is, it's simple. You've got an Amazon Prime account. All you guys got Amazon Prime accounts because that's just how people roll. Well, every month you get a free subscription to something. So if you use that free subscription on us, it helps us out and helps us keep the doors open. Now, if you really want to help us in a more personal way, here I'm playing with my nose and playing with my hair. But if you want to help us out in a more personal way, well, we've got a Patreon. And look at that. Um, yep, we've got the Patreon going for as low as a dollar a month. A dollar a month. It's not a whole lot, I know, but um, it really helps us out, spread the word, and build the community, and it helps us keep the light on. Um, 
last week during the Anomaly live stream, our old computer just melted. Melted. It melted right before I was supposed to push the button to start streaming and isn't all that stuff fun and dandy. Sadly, though, um, well, I ended up having to do a whole lot of things I'm ashamed of in order to, um, in order to get the money to buy the new machine, and the new machine didn't come through until late, late, late last night, which is why we are, how can I put this, boom, 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 having so many technical difficulties today, but all that stuff has been worked out, uh, we are in a good spot, and, um, I am going to turn it over to the Ruthless Wonder to tell up to tell the audience a bit about his character, just name, background, all that stuff. Well, sure. So we've got a uh, uh, an interesting one this week. Still keeping with my my characters are neutral, therefore I, who knows what I could do, um, process this this week. We have got the top level five Drow Ranger of all time, Dylon. Dylon, Dylon, not Lizzie, uh, but Dylon uh, Blackfire. He's an, an interesting bloke. He, he definitely uh, takes to his serious connection to the story. Um, he's very straightforward in that fashion. Uh, I like true neutrals mostly because I like to uh, not make them, um, you know, arbitrary or capricious by being neutral, but have a clear agenda that allows for them to do good and bad things. Situational um, relative morality, I guess is the best way to put it. Uh, and that's that's really always that's been That's another my, way my of saying evil. I'm not evil. I just happen to sometimes do evil things. Sometimes they're really good things. <laughs> Don't judge me. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's the that's the play for this week. So, Dylon Blackfire is, uh, and of course, you may know the Blackfire name from that other fantasy series that people are waiting for their final season of. Um, gaming, and gaming, 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 Targaryen. Right? <laughs> been waiting for these books for forever. Um, but uh, I just decided it'd be, it'd be a fun one to go with. Uh, had a, a great place that got to uh, really kind of put this together pretty quickly. Um, and, yeah, we got, we got the longbow. We went classic. Longbow, short sword. He's a uh, beast master. And the level five thing increase is, is going to be interesting because uh, like it's it's always fun to come in at a higher level and see how that affects how you play with something. So <laughs> it's fun for me because yeah. you know you're so used to starting at one that I, I had the same thing. Um, gosh, it's, it must have been ten plus years now. Uh, a game, one of the first games I ever ran, I, I let my characters all come in. They all got to come in at level ten, and it was probably my second or third time DMing at the time. And that kind of changed the nature of how the the campaign worked out because, yeah, you you have different you have different vulnerabilities at a higher level. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now it's funny. Um, I'm going to detract for just a moment because um, it's weird kind of being a sorcerer. But beyond that, a lot of people know I talk a lot about my mom. Okay, because my mom is awesome. And just to show the awesomeness, keep in mind I was born a poor black child in South Central Los Angeles. And um, just given your character reminded me that I should show the audience something really cool. And this is one of my very few Christmas presents that I got this year. But this was from my mother. That's good old Mama T. And check this guy out right here. My mom gave me bling because women like jewelry. And I don't know if you can see that properly. But there we go. She gave me the Targaryen family crest. In cobalt steel and like that is um, dope. sterling I like silver, because you know my mom is like, you need to wear more nice things. But here you go, because I know you're a dork. <laughs> <laughs> I like it though, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I can't wait for occasions to wear it. You know, other than when I'm GMing. <laughs> so since we got a black fire going right now, here we go. Ah, uh, there we are. Hey, I'm starting to feel like Shaft. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on just a minute here. Uh huh, uh huh. Shaft and Shafty, 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 Shafty. Yeah. Game One day game. you'll have to uh, find some excuse to get me to actually talk about my own series that I'm writing. <laughs> uh, uh, that's going to be another I'll, show. 
Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, when, when Game of Thrones comes back around, I, I, obviously I, I do the the recaps on my, my old channel with Chris Hines. Um, we've been doing those kind of every season since, I guess, five now. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, you know, that, that Chris loves doing them because he loves hearing my crazy theories about what the show's doing. <laughs> because, and, and, you know, people like, as, as we're kind of getting set up, I'll tell people this story. I have this weird penchant for getting right what the writers are figuring out and doing with the series uh -huh. without really seeing much of it. Um, so there are a lot of people who don't watch watch TV shows with me because if I make a prediction, it usually ends up happening. Oh, so <laughs> what you're saying is people don't like watching TV with you because you spoil everything. <laughs> but I don't know anything ahead of time. <laughs> there are two full, like, the first two seasons of Westworld um, are one of the one of the guys I actually do the Illuminati podcast with, Alan. Uh, and I made a prediction at the very beginning with no information. And that's exactly what's happened both times. And he is still mad about that. <laughs> uh, hey, hey, you know, nobody likes to spoiler, man, because it, it makes them feel like they're, um, like, you know, uh, Vixen does that with me all the time. I'm sitting up and she's like, yeah, no, that guy's flirting with her and he's going to be doing this and then she's going to do this and that's what's happening. And I'm like, can't you just let me watch? Damn, Gina. Damn. Yeah, so. All right. And, and that would be perfect if I, I if I was doing it in the middle of the episode. And he's like, yeah. <laughs> I, the, the first season of Westworld, I, he particularly got mad about me because I literally called it like five minutes into the show. And <laughs> it happened. <laughs> I, I, basically, I called everybody that was a, a host in in the first five minutes. I was like, yeah, that guy's. I was like, all these people that we think are people are actually all hosts, except for this person, this person, and this one. And they're like, uh, how'd you do that? And, of course, you know, I would get angry text messages after after episodes would end. I'm so mad! <laughs> I'm like, tell uh, you, man, remind me never to play Fallout 4 with you. <laughs> yeah, no, no, he's, a, he, he's a replicant. He's a replicant. Or is it a synth? Yeah, he's a synth. She's synth. a synth. That's a synth. That thing over there is a synth. <laughs> it's like, dude, I don't think that tree is a synth. It's all synth. Everything is synthesized. Well, I did call it the birds were synths, which. <laughs> <laughs> no. There's still people mad about that one, definitely. <laughs> but yeah, and of course, you know, I'm, I I bring up Fallout because you know it's it's the popular thing right now. But we also know that it's the popular thing to hate because it's the internet, and nothing makes the internet go. More than thing bad, other than pornography. So, I don't know. Is it some kind of outrage porn? I don't. I don't. Since I don't play video games, I don't know. I, it kind of is. Um, the the issue is only six, and uh, you know, to a certain degree, I understand what they're mad about uh, because I have I have been angry about Bethesda's direction with the Fallout series since they took over. But some of the stuff is just nitpicking. And they need to let, like, you gotta let certain stuff go. Wait, uh, nitpicking? Yeah. On the internet? Yeah. No. By Fallout. But it's Bethesda fans, like, you guys love a company that has glitches in everything. You make videos about how much you love stupid glitches in Bethesda games, and now you're mad there are glitches in the Bethesda game. Yeah. <laughs> well, see, it's, it's different. It's different, because, because... Because it is. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, that's it. But all right, all right. So, just trying to get my bling situated here. And um, and I'll <laughs> have to do that a bit later. So, all right. So, without further ado, thank you guys for sticking around and all that jazz. So, let's get to it. <laughs> ah. So, of course, we're in the town. Of Ravenswood. It's a small town just south of Waterdeep. Or is it south of Waterdeep? No one really understands it because it's in the middle of a forest and unless you are, what's the term I'm looking for? Unless you're very, very, very skilled in magics in forest, you can get turned around, especially after dark. Submit it for your approval. 
a small town in the middle of a woods clearing in a fantasy world. And for some reason, it stays peaceful. Entering the town, as you enter the town, there are two guards at the gate. <coughs> Hello. <laughs> mm, not this again. You know why I'm here. Get out of the way. No need to be rude about it. Oh, I'm just doing the job. Uh, if there I didn't sit here and else. ask people who, if I didn't ask people exactly who comes through, then what would my purpose in this town be, eh? There is no purpose. We live, we do stuff, we die. That's how this place works. Well, aren't you just a bowl full of sunshine? Aren't you a bowl full of dark skin, pointy at sunshine? <laughs> oh. Sunshine! <laughs> Sorry, 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 sorry about that. Um, dark skin, pointy head, moonlight. Yeah, there, yeah, dark head, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, there we go. Don't pay any attention to him. He, 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 he tries to be charismatic, but, but, but he's mad, sir. He's mad. Absolutely mad, sir. Fine. So, what's going on now? Why was I summoned? Uh, don't know, sir. We're just the gods. If we were to summon anyone, it would be so we could take a loo break, eh? <laughs> fine, fine. Which way do your leader, mayor, whatever you call that human? Uh, just follow the main road. Um, center of town, can't miss it. <laughs> Alright. Oh, wait. So... None shall pass. I always want to say that. <clears throat> Again, with the human stuff. Out of the way. Yeah. So, as you're walking through the center of town, you see that it is the center of commerce. There is um, standard town fair. You have an inn that has a tavern. Um, there is a smithy. There are signs pointing toward, you know, the tanner. Fortunately, there's 10% off of um, saddle um, of saddle polishing uh, this week. They call, mm -hmm. it they call it the apprentice deal. <laughs> and <laughs> it's so funny. We have the best saddles. Our saddles are made to the highest of standards. <laughs> yeah, and um, oh, hang on a minute. Whoa, whoa. Uh huh. And as um as you go through the town um this actually seems like a pretty nice place as far as human things are concerned but you mm -hmm. go through the place and you find that there it you know the town hall where the mayor lives is actually very tasteful it's a very 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 tasteful place it's not gaudy Heck, it's barely rich. It just happens to be one of the most fortified places in town. Mm. I'm wondering how fortified, but that's just paranoia. Alright, I guess this is where the guard was talking about. He did say no one saw it. Hmm. Sure, I guess we'll go in. Well, as you head over, um, you notice there is a light or two in, uh, a light or two going, probably from some lanterns, but there's another guard at the door. Hello. Hello, human. I was summoned by your mayor, you call it? Oh. Oh. Yes, you're, you're, you're the, you're the, uh, uh... Yes, I'm him. Don't anger me. Oh, well, fair enough. Unfortunately, he's not in. Um, I believe, hang on. Um, yeah, the, I don't believe that, uh, Mayor, Mayor Woodleaf is in. He's, he, he's, he had to go to the Smith, sir. 
for the smith. Okay. Hmm. I feel like you're not telling me everything. I'm you wouldn't want to lie to me, would you, human? No, I'm, I'm telling you everything I know about where the mayor went. Um, he did tell me to let you know that he went to the smithies and um, feel free to show up there whenever you come through. Fine, There's a problem fine. with a railing or something. A railing. Okay, fine. The smithy then. Which way? Uh, the smithies is uh, across the street, uh, or across the road there, just a little bit deeper into town. It's the fourth building. Very well. All right. So you're heading through, and mm -hmm. I'm sure you're noticing at this point that the town guards seem a little less intelligent than guards in a lot of other towns that you may have seen. Yeah, they seem a little stupid. <laughs> so I'm gonna roll to make sure I'm not I'm seeing things like he's he's a little paranoid, so we're gonna get go do a quick roll to for perception here real quick. Okay. And oops. So, um, you're walking through town. Yeah. So, you're, you're doing the walk through town, and um, you get to the smithies, and again, it is on. It is up, and you see the blacksmith in town just hammering away. Just, just hammering away. Clink! Clink! Right. Clink! 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 Clink. Hmm. And I see the smithy, but I don't see the mayor. Oh, well, right next to him, um, right next to him, on the other side of the fire, isn't it great to have night sight, huh? <laughs> on yeah. the other side of the fire in Sparks, you see a 32-year-old man, <laughs> um, and he's very, what's the term I'm looking for? Rich, but not gaudy. He has very high quality clothing. I guess that's what humans call important. Let's talk to the man. Okay. Clink. Clink. Oh. You must be Lord Blackfire. I am Dylon Blackfire, yes. Okay, well, Dylon. I'm sorry, um, in the in the scroll that I got. Oh, yes, that's okay. I'm used to pronouncing it Dylan. Please excuse me. Um, my, <laughs> well, my dro is a little rusty. I haven't had to negotiate anything for the Covenant for a very long time. You're a human, it's to be understood. Um, but yes, um, I sent out a call primarily because of Cassius here. See, Cassius yeah, has a bit of a problem, and I figure since one of one of the Masters of the Covenant was sending a representative, I figure I get some work done on some of the railings for the for the mayor's townhome. Um, is there anything I can get you? Uh, no, what is the mission thing? What do you need? I'll let you talk to um, Cassius about that. Um, tink, 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 Cassius, tink. Will you stop with that hammer? Tink, tink. I can't even hear him. Tink, tink. And he goes up and he taps on Cassius. He cash on. He taps on Cassius. Mm. Oh, my oh, hand. Yeah. Mm. All right, all right, yeah, yeah. Um, and he introduces, um, Dylan Blackfire. This is Cassius London Luna Dream. <laughs> oh, how's it going? How's it going? It's 
going well, human. Oh. What is it you actually need? Well, Dro, um, I got a little bit of a problem. Got a little bit of a problem. Um, Mayor, you can head back to the town hall. I'd rather you not be here over this. And the mayor is like, okay, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Perfectly fine, you know. And, um, well, uh, around every even-numbered hour, a strange thing happens. And it's sort of a violation of the covenant, but we don't know who's available, so we've got to go across our own, uh, go across our own side and invoke the help of, of you guys, I suppose. And this isn't a job for spiders. This isn't a job for the spiders. This, this is a job for somebody who can track, somebody who can hunt. How are you at tracking and hunting, Dro? Did you just ask me how I track? Are you insane, sir? I've been known, been known, been known a little bit. This will not do. So, you invoked the Covenant to have me sent forth to hunt something down, and then ask if I can hunt something down. That about sums it up, yeah. Yeah. Matter of fact, should be happening right about... Huh. And as soon as he says that, <laughs> okay, he stops talking, and he looks around. Wait for it. Wait for it. I've done a perception roll, by the way. Okay. What'd you get? Nineteen. Nineteen. And, with your perception roll, it is hot in here. It is hot and not too bright, but... About as bright as, say, the main hall when you're having, um, when you're having human, um, human diplomats come in to see, <coughs> to, to see the Drider, uh, the Drider Lord. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, it's bright enough for them to see comfortably, but there is something a little odd about this place. Hmm. So it's odd, but I can't place it. That is correct. Okay. All right. So, blacksmith, this this happens every hour on the hour. Uh, not every hour, just the even number ones. So every two hours. Clang, 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 and all of a sudden. Everything starts going nuts. Um, you know that scene in Fantasia where everything, like, you know, that scene in Fantasia where Mickey Mouse is, you know, doing the whole Wizard's Apprentice thing? And yeah. The, yeah. All right. That is starting to happen in the smithy, including a whole lot of the stuff that's made from iron. Um, his tools start floating around like in Poltergeist. And this, well, how can we put it? As he's doing it, soot is coming up from, um, from his buckets and from his tool. And it smooths down the front of his hair, uh, just the front part of his hair right here. Smooths it down and puts a Groucho Marx, um, puts a Groucho Marx type mustache and eyebrows on him. And the mop starts dancing and the anvil starts singing popular songs off key. This, what madness, what weird madness has taken this place. Human, what, what is going on? And as he's trying to, as he's trying to talk to you, yeah, this is about it, just wait for it. We gotta wait for the song to end. And sure enough, um, after the anvil is singing, and again, it's singing the popular tunes, 
you know. So sure enough, in a very Anvil type voice, I'm never gonna dance again. Guilty feet have got no rhythm. And the mops are doing like disparate dance moves. Like it's kind of moving like that, you know, and then bouncing and bouncing and back and forth and back and forth. And during what you would know as the bridge of the song, a giant, like the water from his bucket raises up and forms a mirror. And the, and the broom is dancing to its reflection, but it's disparate dance moves from, um, from that. So like, if you were to look at it as a viewer, you would see him doing the running man and he would be pop locking, but it's a broom. So how could you know? And, um, a little broom like goes to the water mirror that's there and it takes like sort of a sexy pose, but it's a smaller broom. So it kind of reminds you of like, if somebody was dancing in front of a mirror, but they had a poster of themselves on the wall, that's also showing up in the mirror. <laughs> yeah so um so yeah and the song ends and everything falls down yeah. a... so this every it's about that track is... <laughs> wait what is this? You, you do this every two hours? No, my shop does this every two hours. <laughs> okay, well this will be interesting, I guess. Yeah, what am I tracking down? What are you... I... Okay, sure. So, this has been happening this time of year, every 10 years, every two hours, every day, all through spring, ever since my grandfather opened up this place. <clears throat> but it only it happens like when I'm the only person that's here. Does it happen when there's a dwarf here with me? <clears throat> Evident, or it happens when there's a dwarf here with me. Evidently, it happens when there's a drow. Happens when there's a wood elf. Happens when there are halflings. Hell, a damn near hired a tiefling apprentice. Just to make the noise stop. But whenever it's just plain old human beings, this happens every two hours, every day, all of spring. <laughs> You're cursed. Your whole shop is cursed. Should burn it down and start again. Funny you mention that. That was something that my great grandmother did. I don't know if she did it intentionally. She was saying that she was just warming a pot of soup and it got a little bit out of control. But, uh, Grandma Luna Dream was a little bit touched. Yeah, touched. But that's a different story for a different day. What the long. What the story is now is that we've tried destroying the place, we've tried setting up shop elsewhere, we've tried leaving this town. This is the fourth town that we have come to that hasn't, what's the term, run us the hell out of here on a covered cart. <laughs> so, That's definitely what I would have done to you. So, I do like making a living, but I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> This is really irritating, and the town would probably pull itself together to make sure I could close down shop for three months out of every year, but uh, that's a weight that I don't really want to put on my friends and neighbors. I'm sure you understand. Just on the covenant that your entire town signed, yes, I understand. So, according to the Covenant, when there's supernatural buggery going around, we can call up on people who know something about this. And in truth, you know, I, I just hammer. That's what I do. I hammer, I twist, I temper. That's what I do. 
you know, I know a charm here and a charm there, but really, I don't know how they work. I just hammer and twist and hammer and hammer and temper and hammer and hammer and quench. That's what I do. You know, I have been looking for a new sword and bow. I guess I can take care of this. Fine, fine, human. Well, I'll look into it. Well, that's a fair enough thing. Um, the best I can do, the best I can do, is we came in through the northwest route. So we came in through the paths on the northwest side of town, through the wizard's gate. Um, I just got a gut feeling that something is happening from there. Always good to trace back your steps. Anything else? Any trinkets that didn't exist that might have shown up? Any strange visitors that were leaving the last town you were in around the same time you did? Well, again, I was practically born here, but there is my great-great-grandfather's trunk. Hang on a moment. And he goes to the back of the shop, and he pulls out a cedar chest and he opens up the cedar chest and there's just a bunch of stuff first you get the woof of what happens when you open up a cedar chest y'all y'all know <laughs> and um he pulls out quite a few different trinkets he pulls out um he pulls out like necklaces and rings and stuff like that and uh, make a perception roll. Yep. Perception roll. So. So we are at seventeen. Okay. Seventeen. Um, you notice a tailcoat. Um, it's really, really dark. It's almost like an olive color. And on, on the back of the tailcoats are four hearts that meet up with each other. Like heart, 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 heart. And they meet up with each other where the hearts come to a point. And then, um, coming out of one of the side, well, coming out of all four, so think like an X, and then they come out on all sides. Um, it looks like branches. Hmm. Checking in on NP City real quick. Hey guys, how you guys doing? Wow, we got some new people in here. Bird Molly, hey. Bobby Blob, and all that stuff. Sweet. Hey, thanks, Wild Kitty. Um, just um, throwing you guys a quick reminder. Yeah, just wow. Look at all these guys down here. This is. This is pretty awesome. Pretty uh, awesome. I know the Birdman and Bob Blobber from that wonderful MCA. Shout out to you guys. Oh, hey, what's going on, guys? You know, much love, much love. Um, real quick, though, this is a PG-13 site. So with the other websites that we are affiliated with, we normally talk like we talk in person, but kids might be watching this. So, you know, let's act accordingly. So... Um, back to it, as I was saying, um, yeah, um, it's like a dark, it's like a dark, dark olive, um, coat, and yeah. So you made your perception roll? Yeah, the 17. Okay. This has a serious sense of something on it. Like a serious, like you have, of course, since you're a drow, you have innate senses of certain things. But yeah, this thing has like, how can I put it? It's stained with old magic. But there's not a lot of it. It's like the stain is there, but it's kind of worn through. So it's kind of like a blood stain in the pants that you had when you were still in high school. Right. Like what it would look like now, 10, 20 years out. 
Yeah, we'll call it 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> sure, we'll go with that. Um, all right, so, human, this, this, this coat, what, what is the story of this item? Um, well, it's green, it's in the trunk, so I guess my great-grandfather, great-great-grandfather, old ancestor must have brought it with him. And you've never worn it before? Never... No, seen no, it before no, it's, it's too small for me. Uh, it's, too, it's too big for me. I think this might be needed. Let me take it with me. I'll bring it back to you if nothing happens. If that's what you're gonna do, you know, just... My big thing is this. I like sleeping through the night. <laughs> when this happens during the day, it's fine. Part of business. It brings people in. They go, hey, what's that loud obnoxious noise coming from over there? Let me go take a look. And then they see all the dancing stuff that's happening around, and they go, well, this place is fantastic. Can you make me a magic sword? And of course, I say, sure, I can make you a magic sword. So I make them a sword, and I say, look, it happened here. It must be magic. So that's all good. But I have a problem sleeping. <laughs> Would you like for me to make you some tea and, and make you something to keep your ears closed? Uh, can't have that. You know, what if it works uh, too well? True. But there are some medicines that can help you sleep without making you unperceptive to things going wrong. Uh, fair enough. I will return as quickly as possible with this very interesting quote. I have a feeling it might help things along. Well, really, really appreciate it. And who knows? I might just have, um... I might just have a magic bow or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Bow or sword. Either would work. All right, something like that. So, yeah, thanks. Good luck sleeping. <laughs> I'll get to work. So, um, so yeah, as you leave the smithy shop. <laughs> yes. Where to start? Where to start? This is very strange. I guess I would do want to look in deeper on the coat and have more information about it, but for now he said the Northwest Gate. Let's go to the Northwest Gate. Oh, okay. Maybe the gods have seen something. All right, so you're heading out of the Northwest Gate. As you head out to the Northwest Gate, you see... Um, a giant willow tree that's split down the middle. <laughs> but this thing is, this thing is big, this thing is good. Like, as a, um, a, as, as a ranger, a, as somebody that spends their time in the woods, um, you definitely approve of this message. Who did that, I wonder? Tee <laughs> hee. So, yeah, and of course, you go out the gate. Um, greetings! Human. City guard. Guard human. Yes? <laughs> Unless it's me, don't let anyone in after I leave. Ah, you must be the guy that the mayor called. Exactly. Well, you may have an issue. Oh, Keep the gate closed. Fair enough. Yeah, you're, um, I wouldn't, you know, don't, don't mind me prying, but would this happen to be concerning that giant noise that's coming from the smithy shop all night? You're at least half as smart as you look, so yes. Well, I've been in this town my whole life, and I will tell you this. It's never wise to mess with forces that you can't control. My great-grandmother said that there are little people that are making fun of them or doing something because they're mad. Now, I don't particularly like that phrase because I've got some really good friends that are dwarves and halflings. But, you know, she calls them little people. What can I say? She's old. That's just what they did back in her day. Unfortunately, the old are very inflexible, but what do you mean, mad? What 
what does she mean by she thought they were mad? Did you know something about this, God? Well, according to my grandmother, there are a whole bunch of different kinds of fae and things like that in the woods. And I don't understand this whole hocus pocus magic thing. Like, I know it's real and I know that there are gods and stuff out there, but it's just too complicated for me. I, I make bad stop being bad with my sword or my club or my truncheon or my mace. But when it comes to weird hand signals and speaking in rhymes, that's far beyond me. But what my grandmother once told me was that these things in the forest sometimes work really subtly and really long term. Hmm. Now again, I'm not big on curses or anything like that. I mean, I figure if I get upset with someone, I make them stop irritating me with Eleanor. Eleanor and I, we get together and we say, look, we need you to stop being obnoxious. And if that doesn't work, then I first start with L, then with R, and good old Eleanor makes everything work better. But... <coughs> Doing stuff that affects people for generations and generations and generations, not my bag. Yes, he did seem to think that this has been a family long curse. I'll take that into consideration, God. Good. Remember my words, though. Don't let anyone in. If someone tries to get in, use that truncheon and knock them out and hold them till I get back. Oh, yeah, no. Nah, me, Eleanor, and Todd, we got, we got the game. That's what we're doing. Yes, you and your Eleanor. Good day to you, God. Good, good night. luck. <laughs> yes, good night to you. You got it, good night and to do. And you exit the gate, and you're walking toward um, the woods. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to walk away from the road into the actual woods. Of course you are, you pointy-eared goblin. Ooh. And as you're walking into the woods... You're hearing a familiar chitter in the canopy. Like spider familiar or Um, yes. <laughs> you don't have to hide, the humans can't see you. You may pass. Thank you. I would expect nothing less from my favorite guard. How are you, Fuzzy? Not Fuzzy. Oh. Arnak. Oh, Arnak. How are you doing? Good, good. So, I might need some help. Could you alert your owner? Assistance. Shall be attained. All right. And the skittering goes, and the skittering dies down. And dies down. And dies down. Alright, I'm gonna keep walking that northwesterly direction. Mm -hmm. um, but I do want to see what's around me. So I'm gonna try and be as stealthy as possible. <laughs> Alright, go ahead and make a, um, um, make a stealth check. Let's see. Freaking ranger. Yeah. Yeah. Alright. And roll. Almost. 20. 20 total, or did you roll a nap 20? No, no, 20 total. Wow, you rolled low. <laughs> okay. Um, but that's fine. You're making your way through. And. About. Well, about half a night's journey, you are okay. hearing 
um, an interesting sound. Now, it sounds like there are 15, 20 people, like 15, 20 people um, doing a thing, and you can hear a fire. You can hear a fire, and um, it, it I can hear a fire, but I can't see it. Huh? Um, yeah, actually. You can hear it crackling, and you can hear people. Alright, I'm gonna move closer, but try to stay hidden. Mm -hmm. Which I'm sure means another stealth check. <laughs> to the fire. Yeah, as you get closer to the fire. 24. Um, oh my god, yeah. So, you get close to the fire. There are 15, 16 people. There's music, there's fire, people are drinking, and none of them are taller than two and a half feet. That god is right. Little people. However, oh, they're not halflings, as you will. They don't have the normal halfling features. They're kind of what would happen if a dwarf was short. For a dwarf. If a dwarf was short for a dwarf. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hmm. I wonder what... They're dwarves. I'm sure some alcohol will be fine. I'll, I'll check my bag for, uh... For, for some... Some dark wine. It'll be nice. That was the exact thing to do because, yep, as you find um, your drow wine, um, five heads turn toward you, turn toward you as soon as they hear the sloshing. Hello. Dwarves, how are you? Oh, I... now what if we're here in the middle of the night? I was making my way and stopped for a moment and noticed your fire. Figured I'd bring a gift. Hmm. A gift as it were, huh? Well, if the gift that you're talking about is in that flagon, then I'd be happy, happy to receive your gift. But did you bring enough for everyone, including my sisters? I... Might have another of these. Well, then it's good to know. And he goes to and funny thing, when you say I have one of these, you raise your hand, and there's nothing in it. What just happened to my? And you look over, and he's got the flagon. Hmm. <laughs> Haven't had anything from the dark underground for a long time now. <laughs> what is going on here? Oh, oh, me and my family's just having our, our regular get together then. <laughs> you know, it's that time of the year where the leaves start turning green again and all of the flowers start going. Your family. What? Might I ask who you are? Exactly. Ah, well, you can call me Finny and Pete, child of the peat moss and purveyor of the rainbow of the rainbow peats. The rainbow peats. Ah, the rainbow peats. You can find them at any place where the water meets the ground. 
Well, the one with the I'm... And you can... How did you do that? How did I do what? Take the flagon from my hand without me handing it to you. I didn't take it from your hand, you gave it to me. Didn't you say you came here with a gift? Yeah. Well, there you go, you man. Intention is enough. So, what has you out and about on this time of this time of year, this time of night? I mean, I realize you're kind of a dark one, so I guess you're probably out hanging out with people that are a lot like you. But <laughs> ah, what are you doing out on this side of this side of the thing? And how'd you get past those spiders? The spiders are friends, family, if you will. But well. Well, you've got some nice gums there. You seem to have a few too few for the spiders to be families, then. It's my mother's side. The... <laughs> and... You were just out here for a family gathering this late at night. That is rather dangerous for you all. Well, you say late at night, I say early in the morning. <laughs> Oh, what's it say? We've seen the sun come up and go down at least four times. Oh, we've got... Oh, cool. Wow, what's it say? Oh, hey! Hey, shame! Ah, Shane! How many more dates do we have of doing this here? Oh, I'd say about seven to four. Ah, oh, seven to four more days. Isn't that fun? <laughs> Seventy-four... What are you doing for seventy-four days? What's it look like? We're drinking and we're fighting and we're drinking and well we we drink and we fight and we dance and we sing we drink and we fight and we sing and we dance. Come on, have a drink with us. You brought us some. Sure. I... Well, at least we can do is give you hospitality, but we've got to give you something of equal or equal value. It's the only way to be fair. Well, I do have a. Maybe you could help me with something. I would consider information a free trade. A fair trade. Ah, no business while the sun's not in the sky. Tonight we sing and we drink and we dance. Didn't you hear that part? Unless it's a the... fight you're looking for, in which case I can call my mom. No, no fights for now. That's, That's a wise choice. My mom hasn't been knocked out for 140 years. <laughs> Ah, you never forget your baby sister. Indeed. I had to kill mine, but fair enough. So, we we were going to dance. Where's the music? Ah, that's what I like to hear. <laughs> and so, you head over to the fire, and the people start and again there is a guy with what looks to be a dulcimer and he just starts dancing or he just starts playing and um yeah <clears throat> and as he's doing as he's as he is playing a song um five or six others start humming in harmony and as that happens a giant pole rises from the ground and it's covered in ribbons. <clears throat> and they line up, some in pants, some in dresses, pants, dress, pants, dress, pants, dress. And they all grab a whip ribbon and start doing the maypole dance. <laughs> I'm starting to realize why the blacksmith is having trouble. So Dylon feigns inclusion in the dancing in the most emo of fashion, because drow. <laughs> um, make an athletics check. Eleven. Eleven? Well, um, you're doing, you're doing the dance and you're kind of keeping up. You're doing that whole, um, half a beat behind the person in front of you type thing. Mm -hmm. And there's a guy and sure enough, <clears throat> one of the guys gets up and 
lights start sparkling around him. And he is like, let me tell you the tale. Uh, the, t uh, the tale of the family of metlers that metled with the wrong folk. Walking through the forest, back and forth, and back and forth, and back and forth, and back and forth, through the forest they walked after trying to tell us that what they did was magical. And we said, truly, you want to know what magic looks like? Well, we can show you what magic looks like. We'll show you what magic looks like until you're blue in the face. And after you're blue in the face, your children will know what magic is like. And after the after your children, your children's children, and your children's children's children. And for every day that you pick up a hammer and you try to make the magic with the steel, you'll find out what magic is like, but only after you fall into the state where you're good without knowing you're good. Who were these people you were talking about in your story? Well, <clears throat> they're not listening because you were in the ma you're in the maypole dance. Oh wait, I'm still in the dance here. Yeah. Really yeah. My bad. And so sure enough, you know, he goes on with the tale. So every time the clock strikes even, we look at the man named Steven and all of and all of a sudden, everything that he thinks is magic or should be magic will be magic. And he will and he will know. He will know what the magic is by the hair on his brow and the hair on his chin. By the hair on his head that will always spread thin. He will know what the magic is. He'll know the magic in the dance. He'll know the magic in the song. But the magic in his crafts will no last long. And sure enough, <laughs> um... Everyone starts laughing. Matter of fact, there's a couple of fights that start breaking out, but the people who are throwing throwing hands and catching hands are all laughing. They're all just laughing. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna run a perception check to oh, yeah, notice the break. stuff as I'm dancing. Yeah, let me know. <laughs> Cause that's crazy. The crazy short dorms. <laughs> Twenty-four. Okay. Well, <clears throat> you can definitely put two and two together. Um, you know who they're talking about. And with a 24 perception, I can let you know that the guy that's talking and a lot of the musicians are all wearing um, clothing that's of the similar style of what was in that chest. Makes me glad I brought this jacket. So, I'm gonna keep dancing with him, um, because I said I couldn't ask any business until daytime. And I'm gonna take a couple of sips of some drink to play along, but not get drunk. Alright, um, make a constitution check. I do love this music, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave a link. Thirteen. Thirteen? Thirteen. And of course... And of course, the folks <clears throat> um, all gather around and give a big ol' um, big ol' applause. Like, woo! Yeah! Yeah, we'll show the bastards they want to know what magic is. <laughs> um, and you notice that when you take that drink, this is way more potent than you remember. And this is your flask. Yeah. That, that was... Yeah, man. <laughs> A bit... Did you do something... Do my alcohol, man. I feel unlike myself. And one of them looks over at you. <laughs> oh, look at this one. He thinks it's bad country. <laughs> and he starts flapping. Woo! Woo hoo! Cool! Look at this bad country. We can't stop here. 
All right. And <clears throat> sure enough, this stuff, I would say it hits you like a freight train, but it hits you more like a freight train that practiced um, kickboxing on the back streets of Bangkok where people start as Chuck Norris at six years old and then they just keep getting more and more and more violent. I'm so, about to dog fire. <laughs> Free the time to drink caffeine. <laughs> Spider. And <clears throat> you open your eyes and it's pre dawn. <laughs> And sure enough, um, there are two or three of these little people, <laughs> um, and one of them is sitting there smoking a pipe. Well, now, would you mind telling us why you're why you're early here? Christian Patrick, I'm here for a covenant. The Covenant. I didn't expect to run into you. Oh, this. Oh, that hurts. Ah, oh, so it's a deal that you're looking to make then, huh? Come in here God, and talk about the Covenant. No. Oh, deals. Information. Didn't expect to run into you. Or this. You got any food? Oh. Way too heavy drinking. You know, for such a big man, you don't weigh very much. I would say your your weight's a little light. Here, have some bread. Thank you. <laughs> and sure enough, um, after you eat the bread, you're feeling a lot better. Oh yeah, you're feeling great. <laughs> because I wasted a nat 20. <laughs> yeah, you're feeling great after the bread. You, it, it's almost like you've got a full day's sleep. And the brightness of the sky isn't bothering you as much. So, I feel that was... What? We... Oh, it's we just just work a recipe. Here. Your sister's. Oh yeah, she calls it hair of the dog so cake. I can think her? Uh, she calls it hair of the dog cake. I'm always wondering where she finds the dogs. I dog. That is distasteful. That was a joke, son. Ah. So again. Ah. But I do need to ask you in all seriousness, why are you here? I was walking through the forest to find information about a situation involving the Covenant. You know the town of Ravenswood, I assume. Oh! You mean the little scab in the middle of the forest there? Aye, we know it. Yes. And of course, judging by, uh... Well, let's just say the stature of your external visage. We're not all stupid. We know that you're in league with the spiders and the driders and those who go underground. I figured you did, but we're feigning some level of... <laughs> well, I'm here because the Covenant was invoked to ask for my help. Not really my choice in the matter. I have to repay my own debts. You know how that goes? All too well, lad. All too well. Promises are, The promises must be kept and the debts will be paid. And until those who pay what they owe, well, we'll just extract a little interest as long as we find them interesting. <laughs> Always a fair thing in my book. But yes, the covenant was invoked and I was asked to go find out what was going on with a, with a blacksmith of all people. It's a bit of a waste of my powers, but I do have debts to pay, as I said. There was something a going on last night. You say, and the look on yes. his face becomes serious. Like, he went from that cordial kind of grandfatherly thing 
to a what? All right, um, how can I put this? I'm I'm trying to find a PG way to put this. The oh yeah, no, that's cool. You can just tell me the truth, and you can you what? Yeah, <laughs> you know. So oh, loked up. That's the term that we used to use back in my day. <laughs> yeah. Yes, the blacksmith. He. I think he's the subject of your song last night. <laughs> well, if he wasn't someone close to him, I evidently was. As a matter of yes. fact, that's where the rest of my family is going right now. <laughs> to harm him. What harm? All we're doing is showing him a little bit of what magic really is. <sighs> you know how the covenants work. I don't want to fight your family. I... And you've got no reason to. Never have we drawn blood, nor have we taken a life. Hopefully it all stays that way. This... visit to the blacksmith, is it anything to do with this jacket? And I pull out the jacket. With the hearts. And as you pull out the jacket... Um, yeah, as you pull out the jacket, you notice something brilliant. The guy looks at the jacket and his eyes, um, brighten. Just brighten. Like, light brighten or like he gets happy brighten? Um, like, happy brighten. Okay. Yeah, it, it's a happy, it's a very, very happy brightness. All right. So this jacket must mean something. I. What, yeah. What is what is it about this jacket, sir? Well, many many years ago, <laughs> there were families coming through these woods. This was long after the covenant was made with the town of Ravenswood, and we did promise never to drop drop a drop of blood and never to spell anyone there. Not a single thing. We gave that. We gave them our word on that. But we can't have regular people talking about the crafts that we do and the ways that we do things as though we're not good at what we do. He disrespected you. You could say that in one way or another. At least, if it was him, well, don't know, don't care. But what I will say is we took that very, very seriously. Very seriously. Well, 